Hi, this is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at my new Kaveco Lily Put in the brass finish. I added a clip just to basically use as a roll stop. I got this pen with a stainless steel fine nib. I'm really surprised by how much I've enjoyed using this pen as my everyday carry pocket pen. I've had the black aluminum version for about six years. I added a clip to it also because it rolled off my desk a couple times. I didn't get off to a good start with it. It came with an extra fine stainless steel nib and it was not very smooth. It had trouble with hard starting and skipping. So... When I started collecting the gold-plated replacement nibs, it became a much better rider, but still I didn't find myself picking it up and using it very often, mainly because I found it pretty inconvenient that the cap was threaded and you also had to thread to post. Uh, in my mind, a pocket pen like this should be... Uh, a snap cap and push to post so and another thing that I wasn't fond of was I felt like the section was just too narrow it just wasn't very comfortable for especially for longer bits of writing which I guess with this being a pocket pen it maybe it wasn't designed to be um, used for long periods of time but since you have to thread to post it and you pretty much have to post it to use it maybe it kind of is designed to be used for longer bits of writing whatever the case was um, I just didn't find myself using this pen very much and when I did want to use a pocket pen anytime I inked this up I got tired of it really quickly um, and so over time I just quit using it as much and then when I started doing these ink tests, it became like a full-time ink testing pen. But then when I got this Machine Era markup, I was needing a, a pen that took Pilot G2 refills. I discovered that I really liked this pen, which has a threaded cap. You have to thread to post it. has a really narrow grip section but I really enjoyed using this pen and it occurred to me this pen it's made out of stainless steel and it's got some heft that just really the center of gravity is right around in here and it presses into my hand and just feels really good to write with and so I thought hey the the inconvenience of the threading being threaded on both ends and the narrow section isn't the real problem it's that this pen was just too light and I knew this pen being lightweight was uh, a con in my book because I would always put this in my pocket and forget about it in fact it went through the washer once and got lost in the laundry several times because it was so lightweight, I would forget that it was in my pocket. But it didn't occur to me that the lightweightness of the pen affected the writing experience. So, I went ahead and picked up a brass lily put. And I've been using it for over two months now. And it's been inked up that entire time. There was one time that I was going to... I inked up another pen to use at school with Caveco Palm Green, and in fact, it was the Sailor LeCool. I had enjoyed using the Sailor LeCool at school, and I wanted to ink it up with a green ink, so I put Caveco Palm Green in it, and it just didn't feel that great in that pen. So I took the ink out of that pen and put it in this one, and I love Palm Green in this pen. I used what was the first ink I used in it? Uh, Pelican Edelstein Deep Sea Green. That was another good one. Both of those inks just work really well in this fine nib. So 
I'm going to do a writing sample on 52 GSM Tomoe River paper. This is one of my old Hobonichi weeks. I'm getting close to the end. And this is like a cream colored paper. So I'll do a quick writing sample. Normally, I'm not a fan of metal grip sections, but I'm learning it's only some metals. Anodized aluminum is pretty slippery for me. Chrome is very slippery. It's the worst. But brass is very smooth but grippy. Caveco nibs have a reputation of being hit and miss. The extra fine nib in my old lily put, I never did have much luck with it. It worked okay with Sailor Gentle Black, but most other inks, I just had all kinds of trouble with it skipping. The extra fine nib, the same style of nib that was in my Skyline Sport, was quite a bit broader than that extra fine nib in my old lily put but and it wrote much better um this fine nib has been a joy to write with and i'm using caveco palm green and this nib it's smooth in every direction um, it's not very wet, but with this, it's a dark green ink, but there's still, it's, the, it's a nice balance between brightness and darkness and saturation, and it doesn't feel dry. It's just a very enjoyable writing experience. Now, the reverse writing... is too dry but since this is a fine nib anyway I don't really have a need for reverse writing reverse writing on most nibs are hit and miss even within the same brand um, as far as Cavecos go I have a broad nib that reverse writes really well and I believe it's my medium nib that also reverse writes really well. So that's nice with those particular nibs to have that line variation, the options there. With a nib this fine, I don't really need to write any finer than that. This is a small enough nib that it can write comfortably in these small Hobonichi grids. Now, my pen... Like I said, I've been writing with it for a couple months now, and it's starting to patina slowly. When I first got it, it was just shiny and bright and immaculate. Now, the the clip that I got to go with it was pre-distressed or pre-patinaed. I think the finish on it is called antique bronze or brass or something. So as my pen develops a patina, it will match more closely to this clip, but you may be able to see, especially around the clip here, you can see where there are some areas that are still a little more bright, but the patina is developing slowly. I don't imagine that I will ever polish it or try to keep it looking shiny and brand new. I'm okay with it uh, looking older and developing some character. Um, but I'm, I'm glad that it's developing that patina slowly. That way, 
I gradually get used to it. This has become far and away my favorite true pocket pen. I carry this to school every day in my pocket with anything else that I happen to be carrying at the time. Um, I've had no trouble um, with it spilling ink into the cap. Of course, it doesn't get jostled around that much. Um, I don't worry about keeping it in a sleeve. My favorite pocket pen before I got this one was my Caveco AL Sport, but one of the things I liked about it was it does have the screw-on cap, but the push-to-post is very convenient, and the size of the section is nice, but this anodized aluminum is still just very slippery to me. Fortunately, this section is small and I've got these threads that kind of give me some grip and just the shape of the section. My fingers fit in there nicely, but I actually, I like this one better. I still use this pen a fair amount, but I like this one better as an everyday carry throw in my pocket because this one is just so pretty. I got a rickshaw sleeve for it. And so when I carry it in my pocket, I carry it in the rickshaw sleeve and that just adds one more step. So got to get it out of the sleeve, got to keep up with the sleeve. It is push to post, but I've got that extra stuff to keep up with. Um, so I kind of, this has become more of a kind of keep at my desk pen or keep in my purse pen. When I do use it, I'll put it in my purse in the sleeve. But the Lily Put is my favorite. I thought about getting recently the new Twisby Mini. It's kind of a pocket pen, but you see it's, it is quite a bit larger than the Lily Put. But this aluminum section is even more slippery than the one on the AL Sport. And just the shape of it, it my hand gets tired. I grip, I have to grip the pen more. It's more of a satin finish. The new AL Sports have a little bit more of a texture to them, but still it's, it's very, very smooth to me. I thought about getting the new, I keep, interrupting myself. I thought about getting the new purple Twisby Mini. It is so pretty, but oh, I just keep thinking about how tired my hand gets over a long period of time having to grip this section. Um, but for short note-taking and short journaling, it probably wouldn't be too bad. Now, one thing I need to point out about the Lily Put is that it is a cartridge only pen. If you try to use that Caveco mini converter, it's it's too long. Look how short if I line this up. If you ink up the mini converter and put the pen back together, it's going to squirt ink out. You end up not it if you try to ink it up and push the converter in so that it will fit and then just ink up the leftover space, the pen wouldn't har hold hardly any ink. So the, the cartridge is the best way to go. And I have so many cartridges from my early days of using fountain pens that um, I just re-ink old cartridges, standard international cartridges. And they will eventually wear out. The lip that attaches to the pen will crack or it will just get too loose to, to continue working. But this, it, it's worth that extra trouble of cleaning out cartridges and re-inking them. And I think palm green is going to be my go-to ink for this pen. I need to get a, a bottle of it. I like that it has that water resistant component to the ink, especially since I've been using this at school. I'm looking forward to using this this summer as we're going on our family trips. Um, I always take my 
camel-colored traveler's notebook. I'm looking forward to using this pen for my, doing my travel journals. This is one of those pens. I know a pen is a, a keeper when I look for reasons to write with it, and this is one of those pens. Now, I did mention that it writes a little bit dry, and you see that me capping and uncapping and playing with it and having it open, it did hard start a little, but in normal everyday use, I've never had a problem with it hard starting and in regular use. I don't think it's going to be a problem. All right. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.